You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Each week, Cheryl will feature and discuss the many challenges of those living with disabilities, along with the various issues that are faced by their families that are caring for them. So now, please welcome the host of Courage to Overcome, Cheryl Jennings. Welcome to tonight's program, to Courage to Overcome. I'm your host, Cheryl Jennings, and I am excited to have you listening tonight because we have a very special topic that we have not talked about on this program. This will have to do with a lot of people who have great missions in mind that are trying their best to help those who are in need of support. And I'm talking about the fact that there are lots of people who are out there in their own way trying to take care of maybe families that have autism, other families, they may have programs trying to deal with Alzheimer's or dementia, trying to start some kind of support group that would help the family members to be able to find the resources they need, to find respite care, to find the very things that make their struggle of caregiving at home more difficult than it might be if we had more services provided. But many times we have watched as one family after the other has to hunt for the very same information that many, many other people have already found. And that is one of the problems that I see in the caregiving industry that is very sad to me, that even though we go through finding resources, we have to talk to schools, we have to talk to therapists, to doctors, we're hunting for someone to help us with some of the, maybe the physical activities or direct care, and yet we're we're searching, and many times we don't find the very things that we need the most. We already know that there's close to 50 million people who are home that are caring for someone in their family, either a child with special needs to maybe the parents that have been there for them. And now it's their turn to look after and take care of the family members. And we know that out of those, that 67% of caregivers will actually pass away before the person they're caring for. And we've talked about this so many times about many of the problems that they face that cause this to be such a high statistic, and yet it's just mouth-dropping when I mention it to someone than when I'm talking to them face-to-face. It's like a secret that people don't want to face until it's their time. And we know that we have more baby boomers who retire every day. We've got a lot of older people. People have lived longer. Many of those who are retired are still caring for their parents who are in their 80s, their 90s, or even uh, in their hundreds. And they are struggling with their own health issues while they're trying to maintain care and looking after another family member. You know, there are so many issues that we search for information. We go to the computer most of the time, and we're looking, and yet we're surprised constantly by information that we find that might have been available that we just never saw before. So part of what we are trying to do is to bring an awareness of this, to make people be smarter about preparing for the days that you may be caregiving a family member that is in in your family. Maybe you have an aunt that has no children or you have a parent that has been really doing pretty well, but you're noticing now they're slipping. They've 
really should not be driving or they're losing things constantly or you notice that there's fraud happening in their home and they are actually being their identity has been taken from them or their a lot of their money is being gobbled up by somebody who is dishonest. It could be a direct care person coming into the home, or it could be somebody on the telephone scamming them out of something, or it could be that it's on the computer. If they're still on there looking around for things, there are always those people who are trying to take advantage of someone and get the the best of them. So what we need are more people who are involved in trying to stop some of these people from defrauding, but to make more programs available to help those who are needing support, who need the help. And when you have maybe an adult child that's I mean, a child that's growing up and they're maybe man size already, and you're an older parent trying to take care of them, you may need some help in the daytime. You may need an adult program, and there's not anything available. Well, some of us who are out there trying to solve some of these problems are trying to discover how we can get people to help support the programs we're doing. Now, I have a good good friend that is going to be talking with us tonight, and I met her through somebody else a couple of years ago, and she is amazing because she helps people constantly in being able to set up programs that help families that have autistic children, they have other issues that those families are needing some support. And she helps with strategic planning, with leadership guidance, and with being just the consulting person to help you form nonprofits or to be able to help you understand if that's a good idea for you or not. So we're going to talk about some of these things tonight because it's a topic I don't know much about. And as I have had people on the program, sometimes I've had people who do have nonprofits. So we're going to try to see what good a nonprofit could be versus someone that is out there with a program where you're going to have to pay for that program. So tonight, I want to welcome you, B, for being with us on this program. B. Baylor, thank you for being here. Cheryl, no, thank you very, very much for bringing me on as your guest. And yes, we've known each other for quite some time. And I have this old saying that my name is B. Baylor, and I want to be part of the solution. And so I am the founder and CEO of Baylor Nonprofit Consulting um, and the CEO of B2B Grassroots Coaching Firm. And what I do is I help nonprofits to understand that they have the highest potential to be successful with the right tools, with the right strategy. My goal, Cheryl, is to bring over 100 nonprofits uh, on the ground helping people like this audience that get left behind caregivers. And I would love to talk a little bit about that because I – I understand. I understand it to the fullest because guess what? I am a nurse. Before a consultant, before a business owner, before an entrepreneur, I have been a nurse well over 25 years. And wow. boy, have I seen this picture <laughs> in the raw. I am seeing it now. I will forever see it, even, even in my younger years. You know, as a, a mother, I'm, I, I was a caregiver to my children. Now I am actually a caregiver to my mom. I'm going to set aside everything tomorrow just to go down to do some things for her. So it's a, it's a never ending story. I get it as a, a caregiver. Even I develop post traumatic stress from being a caregiver. So I know it all too well. Well, and those are things that a lot of people really are in the dark about. They don't understand if a nonprofit is good for them. And when you have someone who says, I have a nonprofit, what does that mean? And how do they function where they are doing the most good for other people? For instance, families that have autistic children. 
I know you've worked with some of those. Tell us just a little bit about how you got into that. Well, into the nonprofit sector, I realized that it it was the nonprofits that were really out here on the ground, really trying to provide resources for caregivers. However, it was also a best kept secret because there were only so many, there were, you know, so many nonprofits that were out there. I'm going to name a few, Cheryl. We're talking about adult daycares. They provide assistance to family members to bring their loved ones, to drop them off so that the family members can go to work and, you know, make some money. And so those hours are from eight to four and that's it. However, there's always a waiting list. And these particular adult daycares are usually nonprofits. And so we I need more know that. and more. Yes. I, I did they not realize that at all. Nonprofits. Rarely will you see a, a, a for-profit adult daycare because why? Cheryl, they get subsidized to the government for all of the food that they get. The family members in the community give back to that. And so there's a huge grant that's been given, government grant that's given to adult daycares. Uh, there's one that's going to be opening up here in Georgetown. So that would make three here in Austin, Texas. Can you imagine? Seven million wow. people here in Austin, Texas, and three adult daycares. So that brings hardship on the family members that they have to hire people to come into their home. Sometimes these people are strangers, and or they have to pay for it. So let's talk about caregivers that are taking care of their children. Their children usually have, like, I'm just going to use autism, um, you know, Down syndrome, epilepsy. If we dig into the state database and start asking for help, it makes me crazy to see how much red tape that you have to go through just to get some help. Just to say, does my child qualify without you asking for how much money I make to qualify? You heard that before, right? Oh, and you know, when our son was little, Every program, it seemed like we were either too rich, too poor, too old, too young. We were something in between every measurement that they could take. And the first care help that we got actually was more expensive than if we had given them our total income. And it was for three hours, three days a week. And that was cost more than we made. It's ridiculous that we have to fight these battles and we still don't get the services that we need or we don't get enough of the services that we are really needing. Because when you have a child and you don't know anything about autism or cerebral palsy or epilepsy or whatever is going on, you may not even recognize that some of the behaviors and things that happen are seizures. So you've got a huge learning curve. And you're worn out. You don't have enough rest. You don't have enough time to look for answers because you're dealing with this problem on a day-to-day -day basis, minute by minute, and many times without much sleep. So this is a great place for us to start. And I do want to just stop right here to tell our audience that if you want to ask a question we have a toll-free number that you can call in, and so I'll give you that number. It's 866-451-1451. Once again, it's 866-451-1451. And while we're right here, B, I just want to pause for a second and tell them we're here to try to provide as much help, much resources as we can by giving you the information of where you're going, by the end of the program, you're going to know how to get in contact with B to learn more. If you're interested in knowing what you can do and you're interested in trying to help support some families in a way that you haven't been able to so far, 
we're going to give you the, the help that you need tonight. So be sure you get your pen ready, your paper, get a drink of water, because we have a lot to talk about on this program. And if if you do want to call in, it's great. It's 866-451-1451. And so we want to pause for just a second so that we can uh, take a break and let people Call in if they'd like to, and if you don't, if you just want to write us, we've always got the website up there for this program on boldbravemedia.com, and you're going to look for shows, and it's Courage to Overcome. We love to talk to the people. So while we go to break, we will have our first break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about what nonprofits can mean. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. All right, this is going to be a real exciting program. And for those of you who are listening, who happen to be in the autis, um, uh, Austin, Texas area, you may hear the names of some organizations that might be of help to you. So I just want you to understand that's where B. Baylor is. And, you know, she has helped a lot of different groups form these nonprofits and teach them how to go about being supported and what, what's available. And so, B, I'd like for you just to take one of these, and let's just start and kind of go through talking about what happened when you said you would help with a nonprofit. What does that mean? And let's just take one as an example. So, great, uh, Cheryl. We'll talk a little bit about um, AWADAY, and that stands for Autism, Down Syndrome, and Epilepsy. Karen Duncan, who was the founder of this organization, had a mission to take family members of these children on a cruise. So she came to us with the idea and through strategic planning and business development, the first thing she had to gather was, how was I gonna make this happen? So she needed a board of directors. She needed volunteers. And we actually helped her to incorporate the name. Um, After the incorporation, we actually sit down with her to write her 501c3 that would allow her to get her status. So we had to develop her budget. We had to do strategic planning to outline the programs how she was going to execute that. We not only 
did that for her, but we filed her 501c3 with the IRS, and she got her status, her letter from the IRS within four months. Which Is was that amazing. fast? That's pretty fast. It's usually four to six months, sometimes six months to a year. Uh, and and we love it that she, you know, got it really quickly. You know, I was just excited for her. I actually served on her board for a short while just to get them going. As a coach, I love staying with my clients for at least four months to really help them to work through some of the issues of how to run a board, what is a board? What are the board duties? How do I do fundraising? Where do I get the money from? And so we develop a program that would allow her to set up fundraising, GoFundMe, her marketing, her branding. Everyone that researches these organizations, Cheryl, are looking and Googling a website. So you always want to make sure that you have a website, a place to where people feel secure to go and donate to. Oh, okay. If I feel secure with you, I'm going to look you up. And in the database, you're going to show up. You can actually go and just uh, put your organization name in, and it will pull right up. And that's what you want when people go to donate to you. Karen went as far as to working day in and day out, and she really burned herself out because a lot of founders want to serve their mission. So that's the first thing I'd like for um, anyone out here that's wanting wanting to start a nonprofit. Work with a coach. Work with a consultant. Someone who can help you expedite and look at each program on an individual basis to see what comes first how to train your board to be a working board to help you execute some of these programs because you can get burned out. And that's exactly what happened to Karen. Even even as we work with her, she was able to get the first four months, but she wanted to take 30 families on a cruise. So her expectation was way out of boundary. When you, if you think about it, you can only take five and and manage that but on the cruise when she got as far as to putting her therapies together and bringing on volunteers to care where the parents have an opportunity to be together and do get some adult time this is a great idea but finding the funding finding people who were sold out for her mission sometimes not is always easy who wants to send someone on a cruise and they haven't been? That was always what she would run up against. And so we started talking to her, do it on a smaller scale, provide respite service, you know, in a certain location, and then work your way up. And that worked out so much for her because what does caregivers need the most? Respite care. Right. And it's just not out there. No, it's not. Even when you have a parent who is sick and really needing someone to step up. And uh, I remember when I started this radio program, the first program that I had, I had a lady that called and was seeking that very thing because she had to have a surgery. And sadly, she passed away. And then her son had to end up going into a assisted living where he wasn't really being cared for, and then another family member had to come and take him, but that wasn't how they had planned it. That's what life happened. And, you know, that's that's the thing we are up against all the time, B, is that we may have great plans about caring for a child until they pass away, thinking, you know, they'll pass away before we do, and yet if they did, it's really traumatic. But they don't think ahead of time to know, Who's going to take my place if I pass away and my child who is disabled and can't talk, how are they going to be cared for? And that's a part of some of the people that I've met. They don't have any 
they don't have any idea how to t- come up with that kind of a plan either. So, you know, respite care is truly a- an answer to help people live longer, you know, to be able to care for themselves. So I love that, that you've helped people do that. So ha- how did this work out with having a location? Is it a lot easier to start that way? It was definitely so much easier to start that way. And she really sit down with each family member to really identify uh, a need that we, you know, helped her to work through getting the right people on the board and then having them volunteer to identify what's the need of a, a caregiver with a child that has autism. And she just, you know, really opened up just bringing in a college kid that's volunteer that is in the same field of working with children um, and to just be in the parents' home to say, I'm going to give you time just to have some downtime or, you know, take a shower or brush your teeth or comb your hair. And that just worked out so good uh, for Karen. So we were so happy that she found that niche, how to work her way up because a lot of founders think outside the box and everything is so big and, and the funding, uh, donation, all these things just really take time. And so Karen got to see that in, in the raw and stuff. And one of the things that popped in my mind that I started thinking was it a couple of years ago when the hurricane uh, came through Houston, Texas. Can you imagine that there was no preparedness for that hurricane for these families with uh, that had the children with autism and they were like out the rain. And can you imagine not having the supplies or equipment? Wow. What that looked like down in Houston. And this is what one of my goals is to really put together a special needs preparedness package for like that would include like flashlights and money that they need to buy medicine because they're having to get out of their house on an emergency basis with their child that has autism. And because of flooding, can you even imagine what that looks like, Cheryl? Well, and you know, it's interesting that you bring this up because uh, the week of Thanksgiving I have an implant, a stimulator that's inside of my body that helps me be able to walk. And it went out. And it went out, and my charger went out. I could not get it charged. I couldn't get anyone at the doctor's office. I couldn't get anyone at the uh, medical facility. And then when I finally, they were able to be back in the office that week afterwards, and I had to go up to the doctor's office for them to check it. And when I did, they said, the company is so busy because of the fires in California. They are trying to replace all of the Medtronic's implants, stimulators, whatever that they had in the houses that burned up and they're having to recover those. And I thought, you know, those are things we take for granted. And when you need those Pro, those medical pieces of equipment, like you're talking about in a fire, the hurricane or whatever, you can't grab wheelchairs and special standing tables and lots of other equipment to get into a boat if you're having to be rescued. So, yes, that's a tremendous idea, B, that you would uh, have a special needs preparedness kit or even to put together a manual to help families understand what might be needed in case of emergencies. And I know we're coming up on the time we're going to need to take another break. So I just want to quickly tell people that we will be giving you information about how you can reach B. Baylor and find out more. If you have an idea about a way that people need to be helped and you're interested in knowing if nonprofit might be the right thing to do, because we do need more people who are out there trying to provide some of the services that are not available without us getting together, pooling our funds, and trying to build the momentum to help solve problems that families have when they have special needs children or they're caring for their parents or even a spouse. And you mentioned PTSD, and we've talked about PTSD a lot because we have a lot of that in our society 
we have a lot of fractured families and we've got wounded warriors. We've got people that, that have PTSD. And so those are just another way that we need to be reaching out in a loving and kind way to help each other in our neighborhood, in our churches, in our homes, and learn how to be more helpful to each other. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk just a little bit more about some of the ways that we get funding when we have nonprofits. Be back in a moment. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. All right. This is such an interesting program because there are so many different kinds of reasons that people are caregiving. So there are lots of different functions, different kinds of groups and organizations that need to be formed in order to help the many different causes out there. So we're talking just kind of breaking down in general some of the ideas about what could happen if you had an idea, you wanted to help somebody and uh, B. Baylor is my strategic planner here that is helping us walk through what it's like. And B, thank you. This is really good. Talk to us a little bit about how you, what's necessary for having the nonprofit and how people would work toward getting the money. You've mentioned GoFundMe and you've, ta- you've briefly mentioned the grants, but talk to us a little bit about what the grants are. So, yeah, we, we definitely start with, right, right in your backyard, we start with peer-to-peer, and that's a program that we set up. Peer-to-peer is the people that you know that you want to, in the very beginning, you want to go right after your warm market, the people who love you, and you want to be able to say, please give whatever you can or if you have a friend of someone you know, have them go to my website and donate, and we help you set that up. We actually write the content for you and execute that. And then we have a program to where we start with $10,000 in 10 weeks, and that's a program that we roll out for you that every week we have you doing something that's going to bring in donation. And we go as far as to go taking it up to 25,000 in 25 weeks or 50,000 in 50 weeks. And we usually wow. end up getting a lot of money in that way. So for the grant, we love writing grants because we sometimes look at foundations. And guess what, Cheryl? Why? There are a lot of people out there that have children 
family members that have children that have autism or epilepsy or Down syndrome, and they've set up foundations to give back. And so we identify, we know where to go and look for those foundations and those donors who have given the kind of money. And we help you do a letter of intent. We do a problem statement for you. We make your organization grant ready so that you can be able to receive some of this grant money that is available because we do all the grant funding research. So we know exactly where it is. We help with the online application. Um, there may be, and I'm just going to call that organization here in Austin, Texas, it's called a Glimmer of Hope. And they have oodles of money that they give out if you just research that organization. So it's not so much as I'm writing a grant for the government. It is right here where we identify who has given money and who want to help. So we do all of that research for you. Um, and just really market you through the social media. And there are a lot of contracts out there that a lot of people don't know, and we actually help you look for those funding contracts that are available or those foundations. Um, wow, you pretty that's right. <laughs> people, and you'll find that my son or my daughter has autism, and I want to help. How can I help other people in the same predicament? And so that's what we really look outward to find where that problem is um, and write that problem statement for you because that's the first thing. How many people do you want to help? So we can do the letter of intent and uh, really get your request for proposal. And we actually write the grant. And, and submit it to five or six different organizations that's giving money. Oh, that's great. That's great. And there are a lot of people who want to do things that we just don't know about. So that's a, that's a wonderful uh, way to start helping. Is it hard to uh, get grant money from the government? It's hard to get your organization grant ready because the oh. government wants to know, are you going to be able to be sustainable just in funding with donation and all that? And the answer should be yes, but nine times out of 10, it's not. And so if we give you money and you run out, does your organization just stop or is it a demise? And so you have to continue having a calendar that have fundraising events every quarter so that you can keep that money rolling in and be able to help in addition to the government grant. So they're out there and, um, and we, we apply for them, but so are the bigger organizations, Cheryl, have these government grants sewed up. It's kind of like, you know, um, suicide prevention or the, you know, that particular organization, you have to most go to them. And that's sometimes the way, because they have that government grant sold up. So we look for the smaller donors. We set up a corporate sponsorship because I believe in the uh, corporate social responsibility that if we're, we're going to the bank and we're taking, sending our money there and we're doing a lot of things, it's your duty to give back to the community, to help in some sort of way. So we like to go to uh, corporate businesses and have them be able to sponsor or, or give us money or, you know, for these organizations. So we help with writing that letter for you, setting up the sponsorship, all the way up to $10,000, and we request it. So if an organization is have the money, it's the year end, they have to write it off, and they, you know, it's so good to give to us. Well, that's great. The and I love the fact that what you do fits so well with many of the guests that I've had on the program that are really not sure, not even aware that maybe a nonprofit would help them in the work that they're doing and trying to help a specific group of people. And of course, there are so many reasons why people become disabled or why they become uh, unable to care for themselves. And so as many different reasons as you 
can find. There are that many people out there that are looking for answers, looking for hope, looking for someone that offers them some hope. And that's what we try to try to do. Like with this program, it's called Courage to Overcome. And it's because we see a lot of people who get stuck and they don't see any way to go forward. They don't see hope out there. They don't see how they can possibly take care of someone or possibly take care of a special needs child. And yet, if they just knew other people that were doing that, then they would have a lot more hope to be able that they could do it too. And it's the same thing with the nonprofits. When you see a nonprofit that is successful in helping maybe alleviate some of the problems with autistic children or Alzheimer's, then that gives us hope that we could maybe do something in our own communities that would help the problems locally instead of thinking, where's the government for every problem that comes up? Because we don't have enough money for every problem that comes up. That's the sad part. But if we were going to... If we were going to start a nonprofit and you agreed that you could work with us, what's the first thing that people need to know about doing this? Do they have to already have one in place or are you saying that you help walk them through it? Um, It sounds like you help with all of it. You know, and I, we love it that you, Uh, come to us and you absolutely have nothing because that gives us a better opportunity to really help you from ground floor. So we as a a consulting firm, and I do have a business partner that is, uh, she's an uh, um, attorney and guess what? She is in the hospital and uh, uh, her her husband is her caregiver uh, because she's pregnant. And so that's so beautiful that she's there. But I'm telling you that we start from the first thing is to really sit down with you to identify what your needs are and what the mission is and what your purpose and what's your why. Why do you want to do this? And we help you to understand what you're getting into. So we do the startup. We do the EIN, the bylaws, your corporate book, all of the corporations, the registration, and your state. We go 50 states. We can do it nationwide uh, fundraising for different states. And so we actually file your 501c3. Um, I tell you, we do so many things all the way down to really uh, setting up your website, social media, and branding you. So I love startups. If you came to me and you had a mission or you had an idea of wanting to help in the community with uh, different organizations, and yes, we need more organizations that's out there uh, and being an advocate for caregivers. Uh, so if anyone out there is interested in setting up an organization that helps caregivers or people with autism or Down syndrome or Alzheimer's, please, please get with me. I will create a special package that is affordable because when you go to file in your different state, the fee can be anywhere from $25 to $100 or $160. To file with the internal revenue is $275 for the streamline, and it's $600 for the bigger package that's almost 31 pages plus narratives and financials. And so there are some qualifications that I run you through to see which one you qualify for. And our fee is always negotiable because my goal, like I said, is to get 100 nonprofits on the ground. When you go to an attorney, he charges anywhere from three to $5,000. And that's just ridiculous because there are so many women out here that and men who have a mission. And, and Cheryl, just as you said, like an estimated of 66% of caregivers are females. So we thought that we could put over 100 females out here with nonprofits and bringing in the community to really help. How many caregivers could they help? Tons. Right. And they know best of all, coming from 
being a caregiver, what the problems are and why they need help and what is the hardest kind of help to find. You know, what resources are just so difficult to find. Like we've talked about tonight, there are just, there are a lot of issues. So anyway, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, I'm going to let B tell us how we can get in touch with her. So uh, just get a quick drink and we'll be right back. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. All right. We have just really learned a lot tonight about how you could get involved in helping other people, maybe in your own community, if you are thinking at all about what the needs are in families that have special needs of children, or if you have a family with someone that is disabled and they're really struggling and you know that they are, there are different kinds of ways that we can set up programs that would be helpful. And we've already talked a lot about how important adult daycare is because we have a lot of parents who are still working, but they're caring for parents or they're caring for adult children and they still need to work in order to provide the food and the housing and everything for that family. So that is one idea that definitely needs a help. And I just have to say from a family that has had a child that was in residential care in a group home and then was in an adult daycare program, they're not always the best place for someone to be. So if you're thinking of how could it be better, I'm sure you could come up with a way to not make it some way that is just maybe warehousing children or warehousing housing adults just to get the money. It is so important that we see these people as real human beings, the same feelings that we have, the same needs that we have. And, you know, I asked that question, B, what is it like to have a special need? Why, why are they different? What do they feel? Well, they're just like we are, and they have the same needs of being loved and touched and, and to, be, to know that when they need food or, or a drink or they need to go to the restroom, that there, there are people that love them enough and care about them enough that they'll make sure that those things happen. And I just have to say that we're short on the number of places that can care for children like our son has been with cerebral palsy. I know the waiting list in Oklahoma when we moved there 20-something years ago was like 300, and now it's like in around 5,000. Some kids will never receive the help. We have got to figure out ways to provide more help and more programs. So go for it, B. Tell us how people can reach you. Well, thank you, Cheryl. And I'm all sold out for this. I'm so vulnerable to and susceptible to anyone who is interested in working with me and you want to be that person that has the solution, please, please reach out to me at 512-350-1747 or go to my website, be like boy, E-A, Baylor.com, um, fill out a contact slip, it will come back to me. If you are listening to this radio show, would you please, please, please say 
Courage to Overcome, and I will give you a 20% discount, plus throw in um, a, a board governance package and a fundraising um, opportunity for you. So that means that we'll do everything for you to get started on your nonprofit um, and work with you to get all those things done for you. And my fee to do that when you go to the website is uh, 1250 and so we'll do like a 20% off plus throw in some extra fundraising ideas that you can execute right away. It's an ebook, oh. and anyone who has a nonprofit and would like my fundraising ebook still request that as well, because I can uh, take that and email that to you, and you can begin bringing in uh, donations to your organizations right away by utilizing the ebook that we've created just for you all. Wow, how generous that is, B, for you to do that for our audience and help people to be able to help other people. And that's what we want to do is to encourage people. It's up to you. It's not up to everybody else. And it's not up to the government to solve every problem. It is up to us as individuals to see the problems that are around us. And then to say, you know, I can do something about that. So, B, thank you so much. Okay, her... Website is b b e a baylor dot com, and I want you to remember that and to pass that on to people that you know that might be needing some help trying to figure out what they can do that would help make a difference in your own community wherever you live because we have a lot of people that are waiting for us to help them, and I want to thank you so much for being on the program tonight, B. This has just been wonderful for us to think in a different way of how we can reach out and help other people. And I want to mention that if you are looking for something for your caregiver for Christmas, go to Amazon, look up the book. It takes courage to be a caregiver. It's on Kindle. It's also in book form and there they run specials on there so that if you buy a book, you can also get a Kindle. Sometimes they're free. Sometimes they're like a dollar ninety nine for a Kindle version. So you and somebody else could actually have that book. And there are all these programs that we are trying to help get the word out, help you understand what resources are there and help you individually to have the courage to overcome the challenge that you are facing in your life with caregiving for someone or preparing to care give and learning all you can about what's involved in it, how you can be a great caregiver and also take care of yourself. And we always mention that during the holidays, there are extra stress times for caregivers trying to do more than usual, trying to get their Christmas shopping done or trying to take care of mom or someone that could be in the hospital. So remember to take time for yourself to just slow down, take 30 minutes, go breathe slowly, read a book, just sit and think, write in a journal, have a candle, listen to soft music, do something that just puts you in a quiet state to be able to help yourself stay calm and stress-free during the holidays. And remember that when you have a bad day, this day's going to pass. And yes, you may have gotten upset and angry. You can get forgiveness for that. Don't hold on to the guilt of, of being a normal human being that just has a bad day sometime. Learn how to forgive yourself and forgive others because that's so important as far as our lives are concerned, to keep from being bitter people. And we have that choice. You can become a better person or a bitter one. And we all hate to be around the people who are bitter. We know that this has been a quick hour and that we have gotten to talk about a lot of things that affect family members. And when you are the person in your family that's looked on as the person that is going to talk to the doctors, are going to be the one that looks after mom. Be sure and tell the rest of the family what your needs are. Don't be overlooked and just ignore it. 
just be sure and remind your family members that you need some quiet time and they could come and just sit with mom. They could read to her. They could talk, ask questions, because one of these days when they're no longer with us, you're going to say, oh, I wish I had asked questions about what they remembered when they were children or where important papers are. So there are many things that we could think about that we could really sit down and enjoy our family much more. And when you work with people who have just lost somebody or they're in a hospice program, that we learn that people have regrets. They feel like they really wish they could go back and maybe make something right that they haven't or They wish that they'd done more with their family members. I have someone uh, that's related to our family that's now in hospice, so I have that on my mind that, you know, there are all these ways that we can reach out and touch people, that we can provide the uh, kindness that they need and the support. So I hope that you'll be looking around during the holidays to do something for someone that maybe you don't know very well or you just want to play Santa and put things on a doorstep, run and hide. That's the most fun thing to ever do, to provide something for a person that's needing it, but not let them know where that gift came from. That's some of my happiest memories of doing things with our kids and running and not letting anybody know who was there. But just want to encourage you to make life good for you, for your families, and to talk softly and to be kind and to remember that you have many things to be grateful for. So focus on what can you be grateful for today instead of what went wrong and try to make every day a better day because it can be. And during the holidays, we'll be having our program except during the, t- the week of Christmas and New Year. So be listening, be aware. And we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Be it Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or autism. Listen each week for an informative look into the lives of those challenged by these and other disabilities today on the next episode of Cheryl Jennings' Courage to Overcome. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.